podcast if you're new and if you're not new of course welcome back i hope you stick around and subscribe but today's video is gonna be something a little bit different i have loved instagram food videos as well as the basic ones my friend julia you guys know jules my mom always tagged me in them and i'm like ooh, like that's cool and i love them and i've wanted to do a video like that for so long but these are things that i found from like taste made or i love taste made so much oh my god i love taste made um just off of instagram and facebook and just anything that i see that interests me just because like they make it look so easy but i feel like it might not be I want to see if it is that easy and let you guys know how easy it really is because they like I said they make it look so easy I just thought this video would be so much fun this is something that's gonna be new on my channel if you want to see more please subscribe and just stick around I think it's just fun to test out these goodies so let's just get right into the video okay so first off you guys you want to go ahead and cut your donuts in half these are just glazed ones I already bought from the store so go ahead and put them in your waffle maker I just put mine in on low heat for just a little while as you can see I checked mine kind of constantly because I didn't know how long you were supposed to put them in for but yeah just kind of keep an eye on it you can make it as toasty as you want or just give it a little bit of flattening it's all up to you Okay, so after taking the first one out, I'm going ahead and putting the second one on. I'm not checking this one as much just because I know it doesn't need to be checked on as frequently as the first one. So after that, I let it cool just for a couple seconds. Probably should have let mine cool a bit more, but I went ahead and add my marshmallow icing on top. This is really good for this kind of treat. It's not my favorite for every treat, but for this one for sure, marshmallows are called for. So you can buy that pretty much anywhere. I just find it next to the icing in the icing aisle. And I just went ahead and stacked it on there. The picture has so much on there, but mine melted a little bit, but that's okay. And then I went ahead and added some chocolate drizzle, and there you have it. Your s'more donut. have your oven set to 350 so go ahead and do that while we get everything else prepared but this is also kind of on the s'more train so you're gonna need graham crackers and then you can use any kind of chocolate you want you don't have to use dark chocolate semi-sweet chocolate any kind of chocolate you want I'm using the semi-sweet by Nestle and then you know good for Toll House and then of course you're gonna need marshmallows because that is one of the main key ingredients for this and then I just took this pan right here and I decided to just dump all of the chocolate on the bottom of the pan. I didn't spray it or anything like that, but I can't think of what this pan is actually called, but I'm saying it's a pan, but I know there's another name. I don't remember what it is, but I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and just pour these all over and move them all around the pan. I want it to cover the whole thing. And then on top of that, I'm just placing the marshmallows and I'm putting this in the oven for five minutes, but you're gonna have to check on it here and there because I ended up doing more like 10 minutes but it's just because I wanted mine to get more gold. So between like five and 10 minutes, I would say, it just depends on how much you want to cook it through and all that. So you're just gonna go ahead and put that in the oven and then just check on it frequently. And then once you're done, you can just take it out and then use the graham crackers as the stick to dip.
likes to treat me on the cold side. And then this is non-dairy fudgicles. I love fudgicles. I love ice cream. So this is a great thing for the summer. So I just poured some coconut milk in, a little bit of vanilla, a little more vanilla because I just like to add extra. And then I'm using some honey, two tablespoons of honey and just pouring that in. You can do as much or as little as you want. It's definitely something you do to taste. So just keep that in mind. And then I'm adding cocoa powder after that. take our fudgicle mold and pour our fudgicle mix in there and then just let it sit in the freezer. I let mine sit in the freezer overnight but I'm pretty sure like four or five hours will do it but also overnight is fine too. And then here's the next day and they're ready to be pulled out and they taste so good. Our second frozen treat, oddly enough, we're going to start off in the oven, so starting preheating to 350. Once again, I'm just using a normal brownie mix, and here's my bowl, pouring in my brownie mix. Just follow whatever your brownie mix says, there's different ones. The one from Costco is really, really good, it's like the Ghirardelli chocolate one, that's also really good. So I'm just making my brownies as it says on the box. <laughs> As we go of course I'm going ahead and putting sugar in here and then some butter also with some cream cheese it calls for powdered sugar but I didn't have any honestly if you don't have powdered sugar I would just say leave the sugar out it didn't really work out that great so I'm just mixing that until I see fit and it could be a little bit thicker but I didn't use powdered sugar and then I'm just going ahead and putting this all over smoothing it out I'm going to go ahead and place it in the freezer I had mine freeze overnight I just think that's easiest because I used to be so impatient about things in the freezer but I went ahead and just let it freeze overnight and then here I am just cutting it up to pieces obviously I'm not good at cutting so if you're a better cutter do a better job than I did but I'm just kind of placing them out for like fun for like picture purposes and here you go these are so good and eat them cold and frozen that is the best part <music> 